Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. We appear to be only a few days away from an Evocati test of 4.4 and Nix. But before getting into that, a few extemporaneous thoughts about the currently running Evocati Tech Preview build of engineering from my personal experience. I found the server and client stability to be quite high. I concentrated most of my time on testing out individual ships, not really even leaving my hangar for it. There were inconsistent implementations between various ships. Some working well, some working completely, some working not at all. I had a lot of problems with the power on doors. A lot of doors simply didn't have power and there did not seem to be an obvious way to get those doors having power even once I powered up the rest of the ship. Some doors had power, some didn't, some had some sort of emergency override. As I said, it was completely inconsistent. I also had problems with the Hull C, which was the only large ship I looked at that did not have its engineering implemented yet. So that was a disappointment. Also, my Starlancer Max refused to come up in the hangar. And, and I mean that literally. It was down there, and I could, and the marker said that it was down there, but it did not come up with the floor. So I had no way of testing the Starlancer Max. So my conclusion is is close to ready for a wide tech preview, but it needs a lot of work on the little details of the ships before fully integrating it into the main build. So I would not expect it for 4.4 or maybe even 4.5, but then returning to 4.4 and the introduction of Nix and the things that are being said about it. Based just on the Sizzencon presentation regarding Nix, a lot of people are reporting a problem about it. Namely, it makes no sense now. During the Sizzencon presentation, they added that Nix-1 would be, in their terms, a hero planet, and then showed off a richly verdant planet with numerous biomes. It is gorgeous and inviting, and we will love visiting it. That is unarguable. But it also makes no sense. If there is such an amazingly suitable place, why did the UEE decide to neglect the entire Nix system as unworthy of their attention? If there is such a pleasant place, how come the People's Alliance is squeezing out a hard scrabble existence on an old mining asteroid? It makes no sense. What does make sense, though, is that CIG wanted a location to test and show off their latest planetary technology and a place to test it. And face it, we want it too. We want it deeply. But it would be nice if it also made sense. And unfortunately, the planet is what it is. There's no way at the start of EVO to be saying that the planet needs to be redesigned. Now, others have tried to figure out how to make sense of this. Some, like my friend Eradicator, suggested the reasons why the planet, despite its obvious attraction, remains unoccupied. That approach, unfortunately, is doomed because CIG also needs a test bed for their Starkitect technology of procedurally distributed settlements and a test bed, hopefully in the not too distant future, for base building. So any attempt to rationalize this around the planet not being inhabited is doomed because it will soon. But as you have no doubt guessed from the title of this video and the general nature of my content, I am going to suggest something. And for the moment, all that is needed is one of these. And the content of that asterisk is, this planet is actually bullseye and will be relocated at the appropriate time. Now, if your first reaction is, CIG can't just be moving planets from stars to stars, just stop. Don't write that in the comments. Don't write it on Reddit and don't write it on Spectrum. You'll only make yourself look like a noob. Because Delamar, the location of Levski, spent from 2017 to 2021 orbiting Stanton. So not only can they, but they have and will. But beyond that, you are likely to ask, what's Bullseye? And if you know the answer to that, then won't you then have to retcon Bullseye with a likely follow-up? Bullseye is the first planet of the Castor system. Not much has been written about it other than rewording a paragraph from a Galactic Guard post in August of 2015. Castor's first planet lacks an atmosphere or any raw materials worth mining. Still, humans realized that Castor 1 was good for one thing, target practice. Designated bullseye by the UEE Navy, this dead world has been used for bombing runs during the Cold War. Today, the way the system's star reflects off Castor 1's pockmarked surface is probably the only interesting thing about it. Which has you saying, see, a complete retcon is needed. And I would say no, we only have to change two words. 
we remove today and change is to was. And then we add the magic words, and then. And then, with the demilitarizing of the Perry Line systems at the end of the Xi'an Cold War and the allowing of civilians to live in CASCOM in 2789, brought more curiosity about what could be done with Bullseye. Six years later, the Fair Chance Act of 2795, 160 years ago, left terraformers with most of their easiest prospects gone. This forced them to revisit planets that were previously considered impossible. In 2805, the Terran Academy of Sciences, with grants from several terraforming concerns, received approval for trials to see if new terraforming technology could be effective on Castor-1. And soon the field research stations had readopted the old nickname of Castor-1 as an excited expression of how close their measurements were matching the projected results. Today, the emerging biomes of Bullseye have reached a level of stability that the Terran Academy has decided that they are ready for the stress of human settlement. Limited numbers of land claims have been approved with the UEE agreeing to provide full law enforcement from their bases in CASCOM. The land resources are still only minimal, but agriculture, tourism, and light industrial uses look promising. The Terran Academy is not expected to approve city-scale development approval for the foreseeable future. See? nice and tidy and allows both testing of Starkitect and base building in a high security system with essentially no need to change what had already been written about GASCOM 1, so really not a retcon at all. Now, to be clear, I have no inside information, so if I've guessed close to what CIG is already planning on doing, or who knows, even a bullseye, it is entirely coincidental. Now for an update on my channel giveaways, we have the Star Lancer Max giveaway, the ILW week, which is really just next month, and then this video will qualify for next year's IAE week giveaway, which I will be announcing at the end of the ILW, after I've bought the ship. What entry per video? Be a member for automatic entry, otherwise subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the name of Caster One. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond with Ray's Guide.